Let's take a look at how to color line art using Photoshop CC. Now, depending on what you're working with, you may have to do this a couple different ways. Let's take a look at the first way. If you have your artwork on a single layer and it's just a white background with black lines and you don't have your lines separate on a single layer, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to separate these from the background. So you'll select the background layer, you'll go to the select menu, you'll choose select all. That's gonna put a selection around everything that's on your canvas right now. You'll go to edit, cut, then you'll go to edit, paste. What that does is that takes your artwork off of that background layer and it puts it on a new layer here. You can go ahead and rename this to ink so that you know what it is. And you'll want to keep this ink as the topmost layer because you want your color to be underneath your ink. That way you can paint behind the lines rather than on top of them. You'll also have to change this blend mode from normal to multiply. This is the most important step here because this is what makes that white go away. So now we want to add some color. We can do that using a new layer here. We'll call this color. Now you can do your color on a single layer or you can use multiple layers of color. That's up to you and it depends on the complexity of the image. If you're not using very many colors in your piece, you could probably get away with just using one or two layers. For something like this where there's going to be a lot of different colors, I'm going to categorize my colors. So in later versions of this composition, I'm going to have this character here as a series of layers, this character here as her own layers, and so on. So let's add a color. Let's pick a skin color here. We're on that color layer. The brush that you use is going to depend on how you want to color your artwork. I like to use nice, flat, opaque colors. So the brush that I use is just the standard Photoshop brush here. Any one of these basic ones, these hard edge ones tend to work better because they're more opaque. You wanna make sure that your opacity is up to 100% and your flow is at 100%. And if you want pen pressure, you can check this option here. Most of the time you're going to want pen pressure because that helps you vary your brush size. So let's start with this character here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that I can see it better. And I'm going to use that paintbrush. I'm going to use the right and left bracket keys to size my brush bigger and smaller. Right now I'm hitting the left bracket key to make my brush smaller. And I'm going to fill in. I like to paint along the edges first with a smaller brush and then paint in the center with a bigger brush. Don't worry about overpainting because if you overpaint, you can use your eraser. Now, you want to paint in layers here, and most of the time it's going to be better if you paint the foreground objects first before you paint the background objects, because if you do it the other way around, you're going to be filling in areas that are ultimately going to get covered up anyway, so it's more efficient to work from foreground to background. However, that's a personal preference, and I don't always follow that. Sometimes I feel like starting in a certain place just because I feel like it. And in this case, I feel like doing the skin. So we could separate this into a layer and we could call this layer skin. We could call it skin color and we could do the skin color for all the characters. I mean, it really depends on how you want to classify things. And I don't always do it the same way. What's important is that you're using layers. It doesn't matter what you name them or what you make layers from. It just matters that you're using layers because a lot of people don't and if you're not going to use layers, there's no point in really making art on a computer. You might as well do it with uh, ink on paper. This is the beauty of working digitally is that you can change things and make them very editable. So now, for instance, if I wanted to change the skin color and I wasn't absolutely happy with it, rather than erase it and repaint it, because that color is on its own layer separate from the ink, I can change that color here by clicking on this FX button, and I can choose Color Overlay. And if I click this swatch here, I can choose any color I want. So if I want a slightly different skin color, I can get that. If you were just using a single layer and your ink and your color were all on the same background layer, you wouldn't be able to have that much flexibility. So that's the advantage. Now let's take a look at how this multiply trick is working so that you fully understand this. If we change this ink layer, which has a white background on it, if we change that back to normal, you can see that that white is covering up our color. If we make it a little bit transparent, you can see that better. So in order to make that white disappear, we change this blend mode to multiply. Multiply makes darks darker with the layers underneath it. And if there's any white, it makes that white disappear. So it's basically just a quick way to erase the white while keeping the black lines there so that you can color underneath. Now I could add another color. I could call this color hair if I wanted to if that helps me figure out what layer I'm looking at. 
and I could go ahead and fill that in. Let's just do it a little sloppy this time and look at how we can use the eraser. Because saving time is helpful, especially if you're doing a comic book or something that you're going to have to color a lot of. Maybe easier just to go ahead and just do it a little sloppier and then clean it up. It's really up to you. So I've got that filled in. I'm not going to worry about coloring over this bow because this bow could be on a layer in front of the hair if I wanted to make it that way. So I'm going to switch to the eraser tool. Make my brush smaller using the left bracket key. And I'm going to clean up that edge. Now again, you want your opacity and your flow on your eraser to be the same too if you want a nice solid fill. It's better to have a nice solid fill like this because you'll get more predictable results. If you start stacking layers here and your layers aren't filled in completely opaque, you're going to start to see the background through the layers and it's not, probably not going to look the way you want it to and that's going to be a hard thing to fix later in the painting. So what I do here is after I've done my line work, I call these flats. These are just flat fills of opaque color. I want to make sure that there's no transparency. It doesn't matter what color I fill it in because as you saw I could change the skin color there. So same with the hair. I could fill it in green if I wanted to and then change it to red later. So you don't have to stress about picking the color yet. You just want to fill in all of these layers as you see fit. So we could continue on doing it this way but I want to show you a different composition. This is the more proper way that you should be doing things. In this composition here, you can see that I have a bunch of different layers and groups. I have Hero, which is this character here, and he has his own ink layer, and he has a color layer. And if I wanted to turn these different colors on, you can see there's a tint, and each layer for his clothing. So his skin is on a layer called Skin. There's this shadow that's on the top of it, and that's kind of optional if you want to add something like that, if you want to get that detailed with your work. But you can see these are all flat colors. I added a little bit of shading with some different color variants, but for the most part it's colored in kind of like a comic book would be. We'll go to Sprite. Sprite is this character on the right. And let's turn the color on for the Sprite. We'll turn off the tint there so we can see it better. And for the girl we'll do the same. So what's important here is that I always have my ink above my color and my color is separated into as many layers as I think I'm going to need. I stack these layers in order from foreground to background because there's no sense in painting in a bunch of the background that you're going to cover up. If I started painting the hair here, it's very likely that I might try really hard to paint in all of these areas here and paint around the shoulder and whatnot. There's no point in doing that because if you paint the skin on a layer over the hair, the skin is going to cover up this area here. The dress is going to cover up this area here where the hair would be. So work from foreground to background when you can and make sure that your layers are stacked in that order as well. Now let's tackle a couple of common questions. The first is why not just use the paint bucket to just go ahead and fill in all of these areas? Well, the problem with the paint bucket if we go to this image here and check this out and we pick a color, if we just fill this with the paint bucket on this ink layer, let's say all these layers are flat and we're not even using this ink anymore. Let's fill in this area here. And it looks all fine and dandy, but if you zoom in on it, in most cases when you try to fill with this paint bucket, you're going to end up getting this weird edge that might not always line up. And there might be a little bit of a, a white fringe in between this black line and your color. There also might be cases where you haven't closed these lines, like on this outfit here. There's no way I can use this paint bucket to fill in this area with this green on the outfit because the paint goes outside of the area here. So it's much easier if you just go ahead and have your ink separate from your color. It's also worth mentioning that if I'm just going ahead and filling in like so, I don't have any control over going back and changing these colors. I'd have to pick a new color and then go ahead and paint this in again. And the more times I do that, the more likely it's going to be that the edges get kind of weird here and you get some weird color issues. It also might start to creep into your line art and start to eat away at the edge there and make it thinner. This is the wrong way to color, not using layers. This is the right way to color. Use as many layers as you need to, keep your ink separate, use opaque brushes when you fill in your solid colors here. And if you want, you can always change your colors later. Again, if I don't like this hero's skin color, I can go to Effects, 
color overlay. And of course, I'm going to lose that shading that I did because I did that shading all on the same skin layer, but that's okay. I could go in and fix that later if I wanted to. I could change his skin to red if I wanted him to have a really bad sunburn, but I don't think I do. There's also another way you can change the color if you want to preserve your shading. On that skin layer, I will go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. Now I can change the hue of the skin and preserve my shading. So keeping my skin together on the same layer and calling it skin was a wise move. If I had to combine that skin with the hair layer to just try to save time, I wouldn't be able to make those kind of edits. Same thing with the hair. If we want to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation, we can give them any color hair we want. And this is a good way to experiment because maybe when you're painting, you don't know what kind of hair color you want. Maybe you want to decide that later. And again, that's the beauty of working digitally. So that's how you can color artwork using Photoshop CC. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and share it with your friends. And don't forget to click the subscribe button to see my new videos as I release them. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.